The Stellaris and Necroids DLC Species Pack is upon us, my friends. Let's look at everything together, step by step. First, the portraits. We have these guys with their beating heart. Very nice detail. Then we have descendants of probably some Necroid humans. These guys who were in the Dev Diaries with a creepy appearance. This which looks like something from Star Wars paired with a mantis. Then we have something that seems to belong to a death cult from the clothing. Something that is totally ununderstandable, like in a cocoon or something like that. Then we have these that have a mask instead of a face, because it's probably too terrible to show. We have these people who look like strange insect-like undead warriors waiting to march. We have the classic, well, it's not a brain, it's a larvae in a, in a, in a glass that exists far beyond its lifespan. We have someone carrying a symbol that looks like it comes from the Aztecs or other death cults, showing their spine like a beard. We have the dreadlock dread men, and we have Jeff. Jeff, the Jeffarians. And something that is so terrible, I won't even look at this too long but send it to the dentist and then someone who has actually too many teeth and very very big ears looks like a grayed out necroid orc and this being that looks like yoda met a bat and they turn necroid oh let's not forget about this tiny thing that's the necroid robot actually very dark and spider-like waiting for us. Very quick look at the new name lists that have everything from classic horror literature to the classic Egyptian names to something that resembles Maya Aztec cultures and then finally something that is based on things like D&D. If you choose to go Necrophage Origin you will have this trait, that's a new trait. Leader lifespan plus 80 years, ruler pop resource output plus 5%, specialist pop resource output plus 5%, worker pop resource output minus 10%, pop growth speed minus 75%, pop food upkeep and mineral upkeep minus 50%. This species of near immortals procreates by consuming pops of other species. That is the base of origin of necrophage. And you can see, you can then create a pre-patent species that you're gonna use to procreate yourself. So you better take something that procreates well, because you need them to further your population. As you can see, you can convert pops of the other species to the primary species, and only then can they take leader or ruler jobs. You start with 12 pops of a secondary pre-patent species, guaranteed habitable planets. For you are instead primitive civilizations that you invade and can transform them if you have the necrophage origin and the building that belongs to it. And the building is this, the Chamber of Elevation. It has three necrophyte jobs, and these necrophytes turn consumer goods and food into unity and amenities. But once every 10 years, the necrophytes fights are transformed into your primary species in an elevation ritual. So the necrophytes are in the pre-patient species. And as you can see, the necrophyte jobs are specialist jobs, and these jobs can be fulfilled by the pre-patent species, while the other leader jobs will usually be taken by your primary species. While in the worker class, it looks different and most of these jobs will be taken by your pre-patent species. So let's have a look at the three new civics. First, we have memorialists, which you can combine with a necrophage origin. You can build a sanctuary of repose, a galactic memorial, increasing stability and improving governing ethics attraction on tomb worlds and relic worlds as well. These death chroniclers turn consumer goods into unity and society research. Let's have a look at that thing. This is the sanctuary of repose with a very low up upkeep of two minerals actually and a stability of plus five and two death chronicler jobs. It replaces the Autochton monument 
and turns consumer goods into unity and society research. Then there are the undead reanimated armies. Within this society, death is no bar to the call to arms. Masters of the art of necromancy reanimate deceased corpses to raise dread hosts that strikes fear into the hearts of lesser mortals. You can also combine this with necrophages. And then you have a military academy that is actually a dread encampment, allowing the recruitment of undead armies. So let's have a look at the dread encampment for 600 minerals and two upkeep. That's a normal army starting experience of 110 and it gets you research points, defense armies and naval capacity. The dread encampment enables you to build undead armies of your main and your prepatent species. They are not affected by moral damage, not limited by pops. They have some collateral damage, normal health and very high moral damage because they are so terrible. Then if you're spiritualist and don't have the necrophage origin, you can also go for a death cult instead, which will enable you to build the sacrificial temple with death priests and mortal initiates in them. That's the Sacrificial Temple. It has one Death Priest job, one Mortal Initiate job, and it increases Spiritualist Ethics Attraction. And if it gets upgraded, you can also see the upgrade here. It's three of these jobs and 10% more Spiritualist Ethics Attraction. What will this temple enable you to do? It will unlock three sacrifices that will cost you some influence. First, the Sacrifice Togetherness, where you can Kill all mortal initiates. Each one sacrifice increases the odds of additional gains in unity up to plus 35% in total. Monthly unity plus 10% and pop growth speed plus 5% is the minimum value that you get out of this. And you have sacrifice harmony that gets you pop happiness plus 50%, but at least plus 10% happiness and plus 5% pop growth speed. And then you have the bounty, probably the most powerful, which increases mineral and energy output by plus 30% in total and a minimum of 5% minerals and energy credits increase and the pop growth speed of 5%. And why it could be wise to start with memorialists on a tomb world is what you can see here, because then so you can see your Sanctuary of Repose gets also 20% more governing ethics attraction. This is the dark necroid city of deformed pillars of terror. And if you go to room 27, you can see the glowing spiritual death cult temple that is the new background. Let's listen shortly to the inspiring advisor voice. Death comes for all sapiens in the end. But no one said it couldn't be led a merry chase first. First time user setup initialized. Let me show you around. Maybe play you a sound. The Empire looks pretty groovy. Or if you want something visual that's not too abysmal, we could take in an old primitive society themed hollow. Entropy. Dilapidation. Decay. The gradual heat death of the universe can be quite fascinating if you stop for a moment and think about it. This is a base space station of the Necroids DLC. With the science ship here that you see that is actually docked at this station. These are the first military ships called Wets. Watch our constructor glow eerily in the dark. That's our good looking destroyer. The absolutely fine and powerful cruiser. It's turrets. The impressive looking battleship. Yeah, that's nice, eh? There's something behind that. What is that? It's the whopping juggernaut. And you can see it looks like a bat from above. <laughs> And there's something tiny hidden in the tradition tree. The unity of self, interstellar harmony, necrophaging bobs provides extra unity. This is how the Colossus looks for the necroids. Very sweet. Very glowing darkly. 
Let's not forget the civilian stations. This is a research station in all its glory. And here we got the slightly different mining station. Very nice, round, still very thorny. That's a pattern. And that is one of the nice fleet transports with all the windows. Not that undead armies need windows, but still, it looks nice. This is the upgraded star hold, a little bit bigger. Meet the star fortress that is growing. And this is how the citadel looks like. And glowing here, this little glowing thing is the iron cannon at a citadel. Very nice. And the pre-scripted empire, meaning that it has some special events and is so great to try the new DLC out, are the Pashati Absorbers. As you can see, they've reanimated armies as well. Their necrophage is very strong. The result of dark experimentations by the Jeffarians which is their prepatent species. The former owners of the planet Terralon, the Pashatians are the ultimate parasites. Originally a semi-sapient creature dwelling in the depths of Terralon's mountains, the Jeffarians uplifted and augmented them to act as a subservient slave race. However, their uplifting was rather too effective and they unleashed a monster horrified at the capabilities of their creation, which included the ability to absorb other sentient species and turn them into Bishartians. The Jeffarians tried to shut down the experiment. However, a small group of uplifted Bishartians escaped over the years. They bided their time, managing not only to evade capture, but also gradually increase their numbers and develop a technological base to rival the Jeffarians. Eventually, the Jeffarians noticed that something was amiss. By then, they were powerless to resist. resist. Soon, the Pashatians had seized control of the planet, unleashing violent pogroms on their erstwhile oppressors, all the while further increasing their numbers. Now poised to take the stars, the Pashatians stand ready to pursue what they see as their solemn duty, the conversion of all lesser life forms to their likeness is their prepatent species, the Jeffarians, of course. So the final verdict. Necrids is a good deal at its price tag. It introduces some new and interesting mechanics and all the visuals are fine as well. Especially if you're a veteran player looking for something new, Necrids is probably for you. Also, if you're a fan of playing evil empires, evil entities, something creepy, something gothic, then this might be just your DLC. If you're a new player of Stellaris that gets inspired by all of the hype, I'd recommend you to look at the sales as usual because there's around a DLC release for Stellaris, there's usually a lot of sales on different platforms available for Stellaris and all its older DLCs and expansions. Thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. Have a great time and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Khan signing out. See you soon and happy gaming.